Hi guys, hello gladly global citizens. Welcome back to the podcast where we talk about how we can deepen the discourse about language, how we can share and enjoy language and culture as a unit. Today we want to talk a little bit more about how we can celebrate cultures responsibly and also just in general how me, myself and uh, another colleague of mine um, also enjoys culture, how we venture into the space of someone else's culture. Because you know like that's a big move, that's like you're holding hundreds and thousands and blah 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 years <laughs> of someone's culture like I don't think we think about that enough and so yeah we're gonna take a little dive and have a fun feel around so let's start yes <laughs> so Cody why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself all right hi guys I'm Cody and Brown uh, I don't know what to say now I'm out of school so I kind of feel like I have no identity <laughs> uh, but we're saying or almost graduate of uh, literatures in English and French at the University of the West Indies. I am interested in languages for their potential to open up the world to me and so I can interact with other people, um, learn about different cultures. And then I'm just also just interested in looking at cultural, um, interested in looking at cultures in general, especially from a literature's point of view. I'm um, looking at the stories we tell ourselves, the myths we tell ourselves, and what makes up our identities as people. Mm. Yeah, Lovely. I love it. I love it a lot. So Cody and I go back, way back, for... I think we've been friends for at least over... 2008, maybe. Yeah, so like over... What is that even? 12, <laughs> 12 years um, or so, almost, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, is it? I, <laughs> no. T- yeah, 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 yeah. I think, or maybe. I don't know, man. We didn't, <laughs> we didn't do math. No, like, <laughs> you know, we used to count, and then I think somewhere around like eight years, we stopped counting. And so here we are. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So <laughs> we, we did, you know, in the magazine recently, we did a, um, we did an episode on episode it's a magazine an issue on <laughs> celebrating culture and whatnot and uh, yeah you know even just moving to sweden so i moved to sweden guys <laughs> <laughs> i moved to sweden and i think i've never understood cultural appropriation more than i have now because i i mean I think that it's easy to get sucked into like the like the Nazi esque group um, voice of the left or the right, and be like that's the extreme groups are the ones that like um, dictate what each one is. Like oh, you can't say anything, you can't enjoy anything. No, we can't wear this, we can't look at that, we can't sing anything. You know, um, and it's easy to get sucked into that, and then you just stop being sensitive to or like looking into the depths of a culture yeah you know and then now that i'm here now that i'm here in white people land it's like you know this is this is like as (laughs) as this is like as nice as the white gets i think because this is like you know perfect society when i say perfect in comparison to other places this is one of the places that has it the easiest for everyone you know they they really have it have it set out for them i think Mm. i think every single adult i've met so far when i say adult i mean a generation above me (laughs) they have all said to me like yeah, we may have made it too easy because, <laughs> I mean, uh, the younger generation is really entitled in a lot of different ways. I mean, it's good that we're at this space of effluence now. And I and I think it was definitely the right direction that they ma- they didn't make it too good. But I can tell for sure that there is a distinct lack of understanding of the world and what everyone else is going through, and what some people's culture means to them, mm. because they just have not experienced struggle, which is 
it, which although this is an extreme example because really Swedes have no idea um in this in the states there will be groups or like in the west in general there will be groups who have just not experienced what it feels like to get something ripped from them you know and i've been pondering that a lot these days mm, i feel like it's i feel like it's also something to do with how insular certain cultures can be yeah. um and so i don't even think it has to be uh i maybe cuz i of course i haven't been to sweden so perhaps the environment of sweden um provides the opportunity for um a certain not closed mindedness but a myopia mm-hmm. about things from what you you've said uh, maybe that is the case but even in um cultures where you have more cultures interacting you still do have a lot of people who are unable to think about life outside of their own yeah. like household outside of their own culture um they are they're not able to empathize empathize mm-hmm. so um when it comes to something like that i feel like that more has to do with um how dominant or how ubiquitous the hegemony is because even as you're saying that in Sweden it's very different where some a lot of people don't know how about struggle that might be from the the majority perspective because i know that in Europe there are still a lot of um issues in re like immigration mm-hmm, mm-hmm. re like even with um with uh refugees mm-hmm. and so on in all the different european cultures so there could there very well could be the same amount of struggles that are happening or the same kinds of struggles that are happening in western countries in quote unquote more diverse countries in terms of culture and um immigration and so That's on That's a good point But you're not seeing them yeah because the the um the populations themselves might be so small or people are so invested in assimilating mm-hmm. that and because it's, of course with the with this, the systems might be different for example with healthcare um and with schooling and so on so it makes it because the system is different it makes it harder to see what the act, what the actual friction is you know yeah so, yeah, yeah. I mean uh, I I didn't think about the how it could exist within Swedes within Sweden's microcosm. I didn't think about it that much, but more so it was like a a heavy example for me because I imagine I can see like the disparity between the groups more so now because it's like to a level that perhaps I didn't notice as clearly when I'd speak with me as a privileged person with my privileged friends. you know mm. and then now that i'm the minor like definitely a minority here and i'm talking from a space that um maybe even just you know just how we've been talking so much about um minorities and the struggles that they go through black lives matter um it, it, you know actually it's not just that we've been talking about lemonade these days as well and you know everywhere and i've been in like fight or flight mode for the past few months too mm-hmm. like is even with corona even just thinking about corona too about talking about um immuno uh compromised people and them as a minority and how people don't give a shit about that either and going outside and da 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 yeah i've just been so like oh my god we we need to fight kind of like or be really aware and then i came to sweden and it's like none of that exists here uh, at least not in like not the public a, consciousness. Yeah, not, or at least in the most watered down way possible it exists. So, yes, the idea where they're they're quite open-minded people. So, you know, they'll talk about it and and be open-minded in a lot of space like they wouldn't necessarily shut you down if you're talking about something, but they're just so far removed if you know what I mean. Mm. So, then by seeing that example i could see myself a little bit more and how i may have been removed in a different situation or how yeah. or how it must feel for someone who's like in the oppressed in a group of the oppressed talking to someone who's not yeah yeah and mm. the other person like you know listening to them and maybe being like yeah yeah that is you know oh this sucks and you know but you but can not feel not actually getting it yeah. yeah exactly but you can feel the fact that their depth like that it's a shallow argument on the other side and that they're not really getting what the other person is saying mm. yeah it's it's been a really um humbling experience i think i i, I, def- <laughs> I, de- I definitely see that i definitely see that
and I and I can I can empathize. Why did I say em? Why are you doing that? Empathize, <laughs> empathize. I keep saying, what's wrong with me? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I I totally get what you're what you're saying about being confronted with a different mm-hmm. point of view. I feel like I also had that experience when I um, was in boarding school. I did boarding school for two years, my last two years of high school in Vermont, mm-hmm. and at the school there are of course other international students, and you kind of do begin to see that intersection all the intersections and all Mm -hmm. the um, different levels of one oppression, but then also of culture. And, you know, you start examining not only just, you know, okay, you're from a different country than me, but, oh, how is gender different where you're from? Mm -hmm. How is school different where you're from? What are the expectations of a young person? What's the expectations of an adult? What, you know, all that, all those different things. Um, you kind of become more exposed to the different challenges that people do have across the um, across the board. Yeah. But then I would still say though that there is still a baseline, and there is a there is a way to talk about um, these different levels of engagement that it doesn't stop at oh you're just different from me because in in some ways thing like everything is kind of intertwined. In in a in a world that is going towards globalization, we're all supposed to be. Um, at once accepting and at once um, we're, we're all supposed to be curious or interested in other dif- in other cultures right that's how this thing whole thing works right mm-hmm. um, and the, or that's how it's sold to us as we um, kind of get into globalization or we're expected to take on globalization which is supposed to be um, some kind of leveling of the playing field um, depending on how some people describe it as we try to d- to figure out how to engage with different cultures um, on a, in a meaningful level in terms of understanding, mm-hmm. not just, oh, you're different from me, I'm different from you. Mm-hmm. Things get a bit, things better get a little bit muddied if you don't find that baseline, right? And you don't understand how these cultures are interacting in the first place. Mm-hmm. For example, it's not a simple one-to-one equation. It's not, um, it's not, oh, I'm from America and you're from Jamaica and we can, you know, share cultures the same. We can use things of ours the same because you have to take into consideration the prevalence and the cultural power, the, um, the, 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 the cultural weight that a certain culture has mm-hmm. across its own borders, across the sea, right? You have to take into consideration colonization. You have to take into consideration um, imperialism. When somebody, language, going to take it back to language, when somebody says they want to learn English, that is a totally different thing from someone saying, oh, you know, I think I might want to learn Korean or I think I might want to learn um, Swahili, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And it's not because these languages are inherently more valuable than than um, another, but because of how the dynamics of politics work in a post um christopher columbus space right Mm -hmm. when once you had colonization once you have um imperialism there's going to be ways that um people are valued and people are devalued and so it is important to keep that in perspective when you're interacting with other cultures right Mm. i saw something the other day i saw something the other day that I feel like it was a viral video, so a lot of people have seen it, and it's gone around a couple times. But it was a video of a woman and her son. Okay. I I, forget, I think they're British tourists, and I forget which country. I think it was in it was a country in Asia. I'm I'm blanking on the name right now, but the woman and her son, the tourists, were running from this woman who was cussing them out, oh cussing them out dog rotten mm. and flinging stone after them and all sorts of stuff. And the woman was cussing mm. and she was basically saying, she, I, I, I can't, I'm not, I, I don't remember exactly her exact words, but she was basically cussing the tourists for trying to haggle down a price, mm-hmm. right? The tourists had gone with her son to get some tea and say the tea was um, for $2, Mm-hmm. And the woman wanted to get it for like 50 cents. And the native woman to the space was cussing them because, you know, one, you're coming from... I, the perspective you can look at it from is that you're coming from this rich country, mm-hmm. right? Where your dollar means something different from my dollar. Mm-hmm. And I present you a price and you're trying to haggle me down further as mm-hmm. if our realities aren't completely different. Mm-hmm. Right? So I feel like in, in, in conversations about... Um, 
cultural appropriation and inter and intermingling between cultures you do have to think about um that power dynamic that can exist mm-hmm. right um and so once we disabuse ourselves of the notion of one to one that you know this equality thing it's actually being realized because we know that you know all humans are equal or at least we're told that all humans are equal right. but when you come to the nitty-gritty day-to-day of things you can see how that is not true for a lot of different people um and so you mentioned earlier that there are the two poles of the right and the left the extremists mm-hmm. and there are people who are of course just straight abhorrent and you know mm-hmm. racist and every other is that you can think of mm-hmm. and then there are it seems to be and I actually don't want to equate these two things because at least one um, one group is actually thinking about these different dynamics, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I have a word for that too, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but um, you have, then you have on the more progressive side of things where it seems like people are being um, overly anxious about getting things right and, you know, not disrespecting and not stealing. And it, it, people feel, tra- uh, some people feel trapped in that, they're like, oh, you can't even express yourself. You're not allowed to engage with whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it's not like that, first of all. To have that I- attitude to um, someone else's culture is very entitled in the first place. Yeah. Right? Like, if you think about it, so what if you cannot partake in a celebration or you're, you can't partake in a way of dressing? You know, so what? what makes it so... Um, important that you should be able to take advantage of this thing that is being celebrated mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. well, if, we, if we think about it in that way we can think we can realize how this kind of entitlement is kind of baked into a lot of our um, subconsciouses because we're we're trying so hard to live up to the um the, this ideal of the one-to-one that you know there no, are no imbalances between me and something else and in a lot of these in a lot of these situations the person who is arguing for um to have free and uncriticized use of another person's culture they're actually arguing from a very powerful position and they feel entitled and and then you get the the argument that oh but what if they do it to me you know like the reverse racism Mm -hmm. argument Mm -hmm. like what if um a, a black person is prejudiced against a white person um, well, those two things aren't the same, right? Mm-hmm. Because when you look at or some, for something like racism, for example, racism is uh, a systemic issue, right? So mm-hmm. racism is not just the, um, just the prejudice between two people. It is also structurally evident in the, even the very makeup of the society itself, right? So you're going to find racism in the justice system. You're going to find racism in, um, in the school system. Just in, you know... Even in one's freedom of movement, it can be um, impeded by prejudice against someone's race, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's the same way. Just like with racism, you can't. It's not a. It's not a. It's not a flat comparison that you can make. It's the the, the dynamic is totally different. It's the same way how when you talk about cultures interacting, you have to think about well, not have to think about, but how you behave is informed by centuries of history. Right. Right. So you have to. So if you if you want to be on quote the right side of things, not that you know, there's an absolute right side of things because things of course change, mm-hmm. and there's also there's other dynamics you have to think about like you know, gender and all sorts of stuff. But if you want, if you actually are that worried about um, stepping on toes or being wrong in situations, it's best that you one figure out the history of things, right, and then keep that in mind when you're interacting um with a space right yeah in fact i was thinking about this recently that i think because i think i've had a lot of um eurekas with um being more sensitive this year especially because um i i mean i like to stay on the side of logic and i like to think that i'm quite a war quote-unquote war you know like I'm, i'll cuss off people <laughs> left right and center i'm that kind of person when it comes to it but um the more and more you know i have this conversation with my parents and the more and more i view like how distant they are um 
in this whole conversation makes me realize that there's no way that I wasn't and that I don't have all of that packaged into my system, you know? Mm -hmm. So I've been spending a lot of time unpacking that for myself. And what I've really found, even just having conversations with other people and trying to see where my brain automatically lands and where I, what kind of things I automatically like garner emotions for. It's always about like, who are you really trying to defend and why? It's not even so much about what you're saying, because the guy who says, for example, uh, oh, but what if the black person does it to me? Okay, so maybe it's not great if you are in some encounter and somebody says something to you and you you didn't mean it, right? But um, why everyone's not sorry for you? (laughs) It all has to be. I mean, like, the idea is, like, why are you looking for a reason to put yourself in the position of the victim just so that you can prove that you can or have the right or the the the, the power to condemn someone else or to decide what the 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 um situation should be like and i was having a conversation as well on twitter um uh because my friend is a my friend is a trans man and um they somebody attacked one of their posts about pronouns and uh, i saw them share about it on instagram and i saw that they were fighting with this person for a day or something like that and to me i just i recognized that this was a conversation that they wanted to have but at the same time of course it's ridiculously emotionally taxing for the person because they can't remove themselves from the situation you know they're they're a lot more heated than I'll ever be about the conversation so I decided to join the conversation just to give my friend a break actually and um so I had the conversation for about half an hour and I got to the point in the beginning, this person was like, listen, you guys are delusional. You people are flipping crazy. You know, I don't know. Um, how can you believe, you know, what there are two genders, like all of this stuff is fake. Like if I have to bend to say that to you, then, then, you know, that's, that's like, I'm being, I have no integrity or whatever uh, because it's like if a schizophrenic person said that there's a bus flying through the sky and I tell them yes or something was was basically what they're trying to say because the their new gender doesn't exist or the existence of other genders don't exist was their platform. So I spent a while talking to this person and uh, because I'm removed from the situation and I have the privilege of being somber and not emotional and angry and kind of like go screaming back and forth with this guy, you know, I actually got distilled the conversation to a, okay, maybe I have been a bit, maybe I've been a bit insensitive and haven't thought about the other position, but still, you know, it seems to me like LGBT people, they just don't never want to listen to that's your a person. That's a person saying that. Yeah, that's them saying. Okay. So, oh, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, it's just that I always feel like LGBT people never want to listen to your opinion. So I get emotional. Right. So they're got, they got to this place of apologizing. But the truth and the fact is that like, the, the issue here is not even the arguments because it's from a place of ignorance and anybody can be ignorant, you know. But the problem here is that you're going out of your way to defend or to defame, you know, the, 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 the wrong or like a, a group that is not in need of defense or a group that is like or something that has nothing to do with the point like you you are pulled well, but but, but that's that but that's entitlement because it's not it's not mm-hmm. it's the, when people take up um, crusades like that against things that don't need to be defended it's because the status quo is being is being um, questioned mm-hmm. and people want to maintain it right mm-hmm. and so it's it, it's more like a defensive mechanism or sorry, a defensive mechanism. It's more a defense <laughs> mechanism than anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, sh- again, shows that entitlement. Right. That the world is supposed to be this way. So therefore, yeah. you presenting um, knowledge counter to that is, you know, flat out wrong. Or it has to be wrong. Right. Um, when you get to, um, when you get to someone saying, oh, they, I, I just feel like I'm not being heard or anything like that. They actually haven't considered the fact that all that they're saying is the status quo. That's all that we hear. Yeah. So it's only... Just, it, okay, perfect example of this 
is if you look at representation of races not not even races let's um talk about lgbtq plus representation in american media mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and how in the last couple of years in the last like a couple of decades there has been more push for representation um of of um people across the spectrum across the square spectrum mm-hmm. and you actually have people who are um who are arguing that because say one TV show got one queer character mm-hmm. oh everything is gay nowadays yeah right everything so it's 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 they this person has not even come to the point where they can actually acknowledge that hey my stance is the dominant stance it's just it feels like everything is being taken away from them because you know mm. what they mm. know to be true or what they feel should be true is not being wholly represented right right so even in in cases like that i find it um i mean you bigger than me if you step step up and join in a, any sort of internet dispute i feel mm. like that's my facebook days gone i was mm. um 14 i had time to waste right but what i it, it, i find it very hard to engage in discussions like this with people because if you're not going to start from the baseline point, if we're not establishing, hey, your view is actually the dominant view and my view is being, you know, is the one that is trying to fight, fight for space in the room, mm-hmm. um, then there's no point to the argument. When you, um, because the person, if you're not on the same page and one person thinks that um, they're being so persecuted, they're going, in, they're in defense mode. They're, all they're going to do is, um, is repeat themselves they're not yeah, going yeah, to take yeah. any of your points. They're not, you know, there's not nothing constructive is going to come out of that um conversation because they're not ready to have it. They're yeah. not interested in having it. Right. You know. Right. I think. And that I think that's my yeah. Go on. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, sorry. No, I. You're right, and I think that's the only time that I do make leeway. And I'm, I, I basically I test to see if the if the if the conversation is linear in any way, like if it's moving forward in any way, and then I may continue to see if I can get somewhere. But anyway, it it usually falls short anyhow because someone else who is angry will also join the conversation, and then it just undoes everything that. Which I just said anyway, because then everybody just starts yelling again. Yeah. And so it, it doesn't really, I mean, it happens often, but I think it's good for me as well so that I can also, you know, work through my thought process with it a little bit cleaner. Because I think one of the biggest things for me is that um, I have a somewhat of a dual perspective because I'm super privileged. I am mixed with white, so I have um, light skinned privilege in a lot of ways. And, um, especially back at home and like my uh family's position or you know who my family because Jamaica as a predominantly black place we're very very light skin you know so i grew up in this uh this place of privilege but then outside of Jamaica i often end up f- feeling like the most the darkest person in the room um just based on who i talk to and so <laughs> which is also a something that I think is strange that I definitely even gravitate into lighter skin spaces sometimes and uh, in general I try to I have this like a double pull in between both spaces so I feel very attacked if I'm in a room with white people and they're talking about something plain or basic even but I can tell the the level of privilege laced in every word and the expect the the what do you call it the entitlement that's laced in every sentence like like the other day i was sit i was standing in a conversation with some friends of mine talking about dreadlocks and whether or not they were planning to get them because one of the friends had had them for some years and just cut them off and the other ones were like hmm maybe i'll get dreadlocks too and whatever and it was I mean, quote unquote, a harmless conversation, but it was so removed from anything without any like thought about the culture or thought about anything at all. Just like nothing at all, you know, and I was so uncomfortable. But at the same time, I'm sure that I am that I have been at least that aggressor in many situations um, or that person removed without the conversation um before so i spend some time in these conversations to kind of like face myself and like what my views are and to to replace them a lot um and also i feel like i have this huge privilege to be 
calmer about it because I've had the privilege of not having to be in the space of the oppressed all the time and that I've also in some ways experienced the entitlements of the light-skinned community, you know? And so I have this space where I can kind of be like, uh, almost nice, you know? Like, yeah, I get what you're saying. I see what your point is, but that's not it, honey, you know, sort of way. Whereas like for someone who's can't, who's not removed from that situation, that just feels so stupid to even like entertain the thought. If, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like it's, it's, um... I, get, I get what you're saying. I guess, I guess because I feel like that's definitely about more about respectability politics. And I don't believe in respectability yeah. politics personally because, right, because it's not as, it's not a logical, it's not a logical equation. No. When people are bigoted and when people are, have, frankly, wrong opinions mm-hmm. um, that are harmful to others. It's mm-hmm. not a position of they... Or a lot of times it's not a position of, oh, they didn't know better. Or it's, or if I'm kind to them. Right, yeah. Because that is... No, you're because right. Because that is the argument that, um, that has prevailed. Mm-hmm. For example, look at feminism. Oh, I don't like when women act like... Bash men. I wish she was nicer about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I yeah, wish yeah. She, I, I, and a feminist doesn't have to be yeah. uh, a woman. A yeah. feminist is just anyone who believes in that. And, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, totally. There is a lot of even layers to even look at it. There, mm. Feminism, when it was first con- conceptualized, is not the same feminism now. Yeah. Um, there's also womanism to consider. Mm-hmm. There's also all the different angles that you can, you know, fight the fight from, right? Like yeah. looking at it from a racial angle, looking at it from a queer angle and so on. But a lot of times these people are just fundamentally opposed to these things yeah no no no, you're right it's It's the the tone policing that's yeah for sure and i i mean i i think i agree with you in that in on what you said but it's just that like i think that's actually why i joined the conversation because i feel like i mean let's see that specific conversation i don't often join the conversation but that specific time Um, Because I actually, I really hate Twitter. I don't like Twitter for this specific reason. And we could even talk about language Twitter another day. I think I will want to do a podcast episode about language Twitter. But Twitter is so goddamn negative all the time. (laughs) I feel, I feel, I feel like the thing about it, I feel like you feel the same way about, you feel the way about Twitter that I feel about Facebook. Mm. I think that Facebook is, frankly, in a lot of ways, a cesspool Mm. of foolishness. Mm. But then it's not... Uh, but then apart from like the politics of like the owners of Facebook itself, because that's mm. something to consider otherwise, but just being able to create echo chambers in the first place, right? Because I think that the with Twitter wars, Facebook comment wars are just as terrible or where I haven't been in there in a while, but I know it's still happening because as people tell me, mm. right? I feel like it's just as terrible um, and it is just as terrible in real life to have these conversations because the only thing about real life is that people feel less um empowered to hound and like pursue it as strongly because you know there's decorum to consider you know you might have to catch your bus in five minutes so you don't stay you know in the conversation or whatever (laughs) but yeah i feel like it's right once and the same thing with reddit once people have a platform and the internet is perfect for this once people feel like they have a platform to pursue and conquer um, other views that are opposed theirs. Um, a lot of people will take that will take that route, you know. Yeah. So I feel like it really it really comes down to again the human element of it all, and some people are wicked to be honest, um, and some people don't want to change. Not that it's not possible for them to change, but just that in some ways you can't even take the burden of being that that medium between a more correct opinion. Mm-hmm. Or uh, the, uh, versus one that is completely harmful or uninformed mm. or so on. Mm. Because it's, it's not just that it's uninformed, it's just that there are also, just like how we learn from institutions and we learn from people who are versed in the, in the subjects about how things go, about the realities of things and how, you know, history and how culture affects how we relate to one another. There are people on the other side who are also pushing their same agenda of spreading misinformation or mm. maintaining the status quo, you know? Mm. So it's like, it's weird. And then it, we, we get back to being insular and how dangerous that can be. Right. Insularity. Once someone has an echo chamber that gives them the same responses that they want over time, and they don't, for example, their whole, their family is like that, 
their friends are like that, their job is like that, their entire country or their entire city might be like that. Mm-hmm. But it becomes very hard to um to to combat that at all. Yeah. And this is not like what like our conversation is supposed to be about, but it brings me again back to the point of why do we have to be all one? Mm. Right? Mm. Why do we have to be in each other's pockets mm-hmm. all the time? Why does there need to be advanced cooperation? Mm-hmm within um between cultures until we're all seamless mm-hmm. we're not we're very different people we, like, there'll, there will always be conflict in the world there's never going to be a point and this is not me speaking pessimistically but just speaking about just at some point like in certain cultures there are um fundamental things that are going to be different yeah right for example if you look at um i was talking to someone the other day And I was basically saying that even if you look at how the individual is treated in a country, Mm -hmm. right? So whereas I remember you were telling me that in some countries, it is that the family is the smallest unit of society. Right. Versus other countries where it's the individual. Like, how do you get up and tell somebody else who thinks that the individual doesn't matter as much as the family in a society how do you get up and just tell them oh no no the individual matters right it, it, it borders on violence because they didn't get up that's just, that's the culture of their place this is how they operate right so i feel like even our crusades it, it, just like i feel like I, i'm not finishing any of my sentences so, so I, we're probably <laughs> gonna have to re- re-record this at some point we're gonna we're gonna have to streamline this shit and like you know <laughs> figure out our talking points um this is just me and you talking right now but yeah. If you think about it, it's just like America saying that they fight for freedom. Therefore, they're mm-hmm. going to go to war in every country to fight against communism. Mm-hmm. That is not that is not self determination. Mm-hmm. That is imperialism. Yeah. So it is also just as imperialistic, especially coming from a Western point of view, to expect to assimilate, say, a culture, another culture, into their own, or to form a a, a handshake bond where you know. You know, yes, you see, everything is possible through kindness and hard work. Sometimes it's not as easy as that, you know? Mm -hmm. And in the same way, we should be allowed to just kind of close off. Mm -hmm. We should be allowed to say, hey, I'm not going to chase this um, this argument with this person right now who's not receptive to change or anything like that. Because I don't need them on my side, you know? Yeah, right. We have to balance our need to have harmony with everyone and versus having harmony with the people who matter. Right, right, right. To us, you know? Yeah. Um, to bring it back a little bit to uh, um, how that pertains to people who want to be culturally aware when they venture into other cultures and things like that. Um, I think your point about that even is that sometimes you have to let cultures be what they are instead of trying to make some kind of mix or trying to yeah. to pull in spots where you're not supposed to pull. I mean, of course, things may be offered to you. Um, but I think about Japan and why I left Japan in a lot, you know. I, I'm, I'm almost scarred because yeah. <laughs> I'm a very strong woman. Um, I'm a strong person. Like right now, I'm kind of confused about my gender, but at least when I was living in Japan, I was a woman, <laughs> and you know, and it was very difficult. It's like a constant push down your throat that you don't matter in the most nicest through the most widest smile, right? But that is like really weaved into every section of the culture and in all honesty like 90 percent of women don't fight it in japan to the extent where they kind of like it you know um the the people who are screaming feminists feminism in japan are generally foreigners and there is like a small group of people who um, because I did it, I did this course in university, and we talked about the numbers and what the groups looks like. And the groups who are feminist in Japan, like Japanese feminist groups, they look very, very, very different from what we see feminism as in the West. You know, like stuff that they vie for would not be something that I would want for myself. Yeah. Ever. 
you know so the approach that they have and the way that they have accepted what i see as oppression which could it's also just um you know the the comfort of roles for them like how much how much they like their roles um where at least a lot of people do you know and i just couldn't stay because it just didn't match what my philosophy is for my life and uh, i couldn't justify trying to fight my way through it <laughs> you know it's not my place to fight it's not my my area to shape you know mm-hmm. um and so i left japan and went you know there's a there's a metric for the most equal places in the world and of course it's a give and take everything's not perfect when you do these measurement things but the lowest first world country is south korea right after that would be um would be japan probably something like that and uh the first is number one is uh iceland then finland then sweden so I literally went to the exact opposite end of the yeah, number yeah, yeah. spectrum, you know, because I was so done with it. I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I literally can't. Like when my friend who lives there, um, per- I wouldn't call it permanently, but like uh, like she, she plans to live there for a long time and uh, she doesn't see herself leaving anytime soon. She sends me like stuff that she sees all the time, yeah. like advertisements on her phone or you know those kind of like advertisements in the train or things like that and they distress me they distress me a lot like um yeah, yeah, yeah. you know one she just sent me is a, an advertisement that came up online which is a, a popular it's like uh it's like japan's whatsapp or facebook messenger depending on where you're from the ad was even though I'm trying my hardest, why am I being cheated on? Three ways to not have your husband have an affair. But <laughs> what? what? <laughs> like, oh! whoa. Whoa. Yeah, whoa, whoa, and whoa, that's, whoa. that's wait, 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 wait. Three ways to have not have an affair, have your husband have an affair. One, poison him. <laughs> Two, poison him. <laughs> and three, poison him. <laughs> There's nothing else. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's you know when I've <laughs> done that bakla arsenic, <laughs> and that is the sca- like that is the level that you're dealing with. I'm talking. It is so woven into the culture that that can be just like a regular pop up ad on your phone, like. Yeah, so how not to get cheated on? And it literally starts with, but I'm trying my hardest not to get cheated on. Like, it says, like, the you know, like a question first. Like, like, like a quote kind of thing. Like, oh, yeah. oh, I'm trying so hard, but dot, dot, dot. You know, still getting cheated on. How not to have your husband get an affair? And I was like, that's crazy. How can this be mainstream media? Or, you know, just recently there was... um a guy or like a singer and uh, and also a politician who are talking about corona and saying oh yeah you know this is good because i say oh corona sucks but at least we'll get a lot more cute um prostitutes because good looking women because they won't have money will have to go into prostitution oh yes because of the ac- economic oh, yes. fall yeah oh yes. so talking about pu- talking about this oh, on gosh, public yes, public radio public radio saying oh you know corona is really shitty but at least we'll get harder prostitutes you know and i was like (laughs) you know i just i yeah it it, the the degree that it is integrated into society so but here's the sticky parts right objectively to me objectively that is like ridiculous and gross violation of uh, human rights okay but that is if it's to that degree we're talking about the 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 really bad like the the stuff that to my eyes is like the really bad and extreme aspects of way that people discuss women but this to to show you the top it trickles down into everything i mean everything in japan and their society is built around this concept that women are exist to serve men just like other places but even like further ingrained into the entirety of society you know Mm -hmm. 
So how do you begin to tackle that or begin to try and, you know, take the fun of Japan, take the anime and the weeb stuff and then pretend that this isn't a thing? Or even just all of the people who, you know, we watch anime shows that have nothing to do with uh, pornography or like nothing to do with that. We'll watch an anime show and the breeze will just blow up and you'll just see the girl's panties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and we just, we just, we're like, yeah, well, you know, that's Japan. <laughs> it's like, how can you, how can you take one piece of a culture without taking the other? It's hard. You know, mm. and and that, again, that comes down to comprehension as well. Mm. That comes down to comprehension as well, and that gets yeah, that can get into a whole conversation about trying to like pick, choose, and refuse. Yeah, trying to pick, choose, and refuse, and again, why is it so important, right, <laughs> for you to um to partake in this, like, especially if you're not thinking critically, um, before we started talking about this part, you mentioned something about being exposed to cultures and whether or not you should partake even if you're invited mm-hmm. that's a good point to um and I th- a good thing to talk about i think because there are for example if you have a country like jamaica mm-hmm. and the, jamaica is heavily dependent on tourism mm-hmm. right and so what that leads to is a lot of really disturbing colonial parallels being mm-hmm. made mm-hmm. literally like in ads Mm-hmm. Like you will up until like up until recently there was this um this prominent hotel chain I won't say the name prominent <laughs> hotel chain and all of their ads were um it was black people serving white people mm. like every single one of them mm. and so it's very disturbing when you think about that um because yeah. you will have people who are begging to serve tourists yeah particularly white tourists yeah the whole that's very true because they can maybe get they feel like they can maybe get tipped better they feel like they'll have like an in to a job you know there's a lot of different reasons why and again that is all colonization still rearing its head Mm -hmm. but in the same context if you're a white person and you are encountering that kind of invitation into the culture like what do you do Mm -hmm. you know what do you do um, and this is where being knowledgeable and being um, being cognizant of history and how cultures interact becomes, you know, a very important thing. Because if you are a part of the, the privileged group and you decide to, like, just take advantage of all this invitation, like, oh, yes, you know, you know, they're the ones who told me I could do this. You're the ones who blah, 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 blah. Then, I mean... You can you can be like an asshole, like that's fine. Just say that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like it, yeah. you definitely, you, you have some of the onus on you, or if not all of the onus on you for perpetuating this system. Because one, these oppressed cultures, they didn't ask for this. Mm-hmm. They, it's not like they created it and said, "Oh, I'm going to make a high haven for white people." No, what happened is that maybe they were enslaved, maybe they were colonized. And this was imposed upon um, the, that, that culture. They were imposed upon for so long that this became the way how to advance in society. Therefore, they just kind of sucked it up over time because, you know, what can you do but survive? Right. Right. So this is where educating yourself becomes really important because then um, it's not for people who are from oppressed cultures to tell you, to educate you about interaction necessarily do your reading and maybe if we're going to make like a, a a list of things you can possibly do one listen right listen to not only your own spaces but other spaces find out more about cultures and then two make sure you're listening reading consuming from the right sources mm-hmm. because um when you look at history history ri- written by a white person in a lot of spaces, is very suspect, mm. right? Especially if you're coming from an enlightened point of view because history is written by the victors, right? Quote-unquote, mm-hmm. the victors. Mm-hmm. And therefore, there can be biases in right. it that yeah. inform a, a, a harmful opinion. Right. Um, a, a friend of mine was reading a book the other day. It was about the myths, all the mythology of the world, right? Of the entire world. 
Mm-hmm. The entire world, right? <laughs> this is supposed to be a comprehensive look right. at the myths of what? The, the entire world. world. <laughs> um, first of all, Africa was not included. <laughs> the entire continent of Africa was <laughs> just not included. Oh, no. Right? And then on top of that, she was reading um, a part about Native American mythology. Mm-hmm. And she got to a point where... There was something about the um, the landscape of America that changed mm-hmm. how Native American cultures um, told their stories. Mm-hmm. And the man wrote, when the buffalo disappeared, we saw a significant change or some shit like that. As if the buffalo just vaporized <laughs> into thin air. And that it wasn't a concerted colonial effort yeah. Yeah. to kill the buffalo so that right. the Native American popul- populations would starve. Right. Yeah. So that they would lose a very big part of their culture, something that they depended on. They acted like it wasn't a genocidal effort to kill the buffalo. Mm-hmm. So, for example, so you reading a book, you're a little you're ignorant, you going to say, yeah, man, I can't read about the world. I can't read about the myths of the world. I'm going to read that and the buffalo disappeared. What You're not going to think necessarily yeah. that, oh, this man might just be, you know, speaking some hot trash, yeah. you know? Yeah. So you have to be um you have to be aware of who you're reading from and you have to cross reference. You know, you have to read from different sources. I'm not saying that you can't read um from authors who are more, like speaking um, from privileged positions. Hegemon hegemonically favored, right? Yeah. It's not saying you can't read from them. I mean, I I, w- I would tell you to find some better material because some of this stuff is just, you know, really just trash. <laughs> but <laughs> But make sure that you're actually looking to the... If, you're going, if you want to learn about the culture, go to those people. Find out about these different spaces that you want to um, partake in. And then the third thing, right? So the first thing was, you know, listen and consume. Second thing was watch who you're listening and consuming from, mm-hmm. right? And the third thing is don't try to insert yourself as a protagonist in any of these stories, Mm. right don't try to insert yourself as a protagonist um and know your own boundaries if you know for example that analogy my name is jane and over there you have kate Mm -hmm. and for the entirety of our family histories jane's family my family would steal the crayons from kate (laughs) right Mm. steal that steal them clear 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 just steal Mm -hmm. them just every, every color even skin but you know, racism everywhere. The color of skin. Yes. Everything. Yes. If I know that and Kate offers me crayons, mm-hmm. I'm going to be maybe be like, hmm, it's okay. You know, why? First of all, because reparations. But <laughs> third of all, yeah. second of all, um, just because it, that, 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 that's not right. You know, it, if I perpetuate this legacy, then am I any different from what came before me? You know? Yeah. So think critically like that and don't get don't get caught up in the excitement of it all. Mm. Right? In 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 some ways if 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 it is I'm not saying and I'm not saying that people from different cultures cannot wholly participate in another person's culture. For example, if you look at two two people from different cultures getting married, you're yeah. going to see a lot of that organic mixture. Right, a lot of people if they have um two different families from the two different cultures in a marriage, they might even do two completely different um, celebrations yeah. of the marriage, right? Representing both cultures where everyone... It's like an, like, kind of like an all-in thing, you know? Yeah, right. Like, that's a, that's a different case, but for you to come enough up yourself now and decide you want to take a front seat, that's completely wrong. And you're, you're, it's, you're, doing, you're doing as much of the, um, the assimilation and uh, imperialist, imperialist work as your privileged forefathers. Right. Right? It's also the same thing um, if you look at, like, the Black Lives Matter protests that have been happening. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing, I, I, I didn't see it as much this time, or maybe my, my social media feeds are just curated to perfection. But <laughs> um, there, you can't have, in a Black Lives Matter movement, that you're going to want a white person to step up and try to, you know, you to speak over... Mm. you know the the people who are actually being affected that can't happen Mm -hmm. right if you're so um invested in interacting with and sharing with a culture especially if you know that it is a culture that has been 
oppressed in the past or that there's a there's an imbalance between your culture and their culture you have to you have to cover your bases you have to be very cautious about how you tread not because the other culture is dangerous but because you could be continuing a legacy that is harmful to that same culture yes okay you know yeah for sure so i want to come back and just give a mini summary of like what i think you're saying you it was good because you you gave us some points and we i think i'm gonna make a transcript uh for this episode because there was a lot and we did ramble a little bit <laughs> um but uh well i think i feel like the, i feel like the first like 15 minutes can cut completely <laughs> <laughs> Um, we but can, you know, we can it's started where we became coherent because at one point we were just weren't coherent and it was just mere um, hmm, <laughs> empathize, yeah, empathize. <laughs> but you know, it's it's good though, guys, because basically what this conversation is is trying to strive for a more conscious. Um, and uh, basically looking at what positions we are, who we are, and how those dynamics affect the way we approach other people's uh, cultures. Because it's this conversation, what it represents is that it's we're not on the same playing field. There are different dynamics at play. There is a lot of history going on. And there there's things that we have to consider. And even just for ourselves like who are you what do you in what are you entitled to what are you not entitled to what are you what are you being privileged to get are you um getting to enter a culture or getting to experience something are you lucky enough to experience that you know it's not about oh okay i like this so this is my new thing now <laughs> you know it's not that yeah and this whole conversation it was a little bit back and forth because there are no clear lines there are no clear rules exactly. and exactly. you you can be invited by someone you can be um you know some things might be accepted in one place or even exploited in another place and it seems like the normalest thing in the world that doesn't mean that it may be something that you should partake in and the idea is that you should have this dialogue with yourself have this dialogue with your friends from that country have this dialogue or you know look up a video from someone and 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 hear what people have to say think about the history your place and how you um what your footing is what your relationship is with that culture yeah and then make an educated decision to celebrate that culture instead of taking what is interesting to you and then doing whatever you want with it mhm so Hopefully, if nothing else, <laughs> this conversation can show you how much thought should really be put into um, approaching a new culture and um, what you can start to think about when you decide to go on vacation, when you decide to book that boat trip, you know, um, down some small river in the middle of Southeast Asia, when you decide to... And we haven't, e- and we haven't even gotten, like radical or anything like that because like if we want to talk about it we can get there if we want to dismantle um colonization we need, need to dismantle imperialism and dismantle capitalism and all that stuff we're not even gonna get there today because i'm tired <laughs> i don't feel yes, like going down exa- that road but <laughs> exactly there are lots of <laughs> but again being mindful of how, of how you share space with people and how you interact with people considering that the world is not perfect mm-hmm. right Considering that the world is not perfect and that we are going to be um, without meaning to, without wanting to, engaging in exploitative practices or we're going to might, might potentially be harming someone with our actions, right? It might be unavoidable. It might not be. But you, you might not even know it's even happening. But that is very likely, especially if you're living in the West, especially if you're living in the North, right? Mm-hmm. If you're gonna, we're, If we're going to accept that's happening... Make up for what you cannot see. Make up for your blind spots. That might be empowering um, the voices of people of this of this culture that might be um, disenfranchised, that might be um, disadvantaged. Yeah. Right? Empower them. Um, support their local businesses. Per- support their local initiatives. Right? Choose the little man more than the 
established man. <laughs> established, no, not, not, not established man, but like, just like how, um, just like how, okay, just like how with Japan and J- Japanese culture, mm-hmm. you have like Japanese culture, and then you have Japanese culture is anime and like yeah. Lolita and all these other things that you know mm-hmm. I crave, you know that I that these cultural products that were prepared for me in mm-hmm. a lot of the cases. Right. Mm, okay. Choose, choose, a, choose a better view of things. Don't choose, Don't necessarily come and choose the um the tourist designed, um glossy finish right. all the time. If you come to Jamaica, for example, coming to Jamaica and coming to hotel is different from coming to Jamaica and actually experiencing the culture. Hundred percent. Right? And one is definitely more beneficial for the Jamaican people. Yeah, you can use you know? U.S. dollars at the supermarket. You know. <laughs> You can, yeah. you can, you can benefit. You can, if, you, if you're gonna buy a souvenir, buy it from the liquor man on the road. You know, don't yeah. buy it in the the gift shop. You know, stuff like that. Yeah, I, actually, know? that's that's a really good point. Be very ethically conscious of how you participate, even if you have to do something that isn't exactly like a hundred percent ethical because it's unavoidable. Yeah. But like, try to consider your choices when they come to you. Consider your choices. Ah, consider your choices. What a lovely, I think that is really the big hit home for every episode. I think, I think that is the hit home for every topic, every episode, every everything. Consider your choices, people. Have a think before you buy things. Have a think before you do things. Um, you, you would be surprised what, into what things mean. Yeah. Yeah. You know, before you appropriate them. Yeah. And I, I'd like to see, you know, it's just like, yes, uh, this, this point that Cody is giving here, it's a, it's a good, you know, the more you look in the small spaces is the more you understand the picture in the first place. So, mm. you know, Cody was saying here that like, you know, it, when in doubt, try to cover your blind spots, try to make up for whatever you've uh, fudged up on the way along, you know, on the journey, right? But as you seek to benefit the people and as you seek to cover for your blind spot is the more you'll see your blind spots. So, yeah. yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, true. It's a... Uh, it's a it's a beautiful process. We're all not perfect, and uh, there is no rights. There there is certainly a wrong, but there is definitely not a hard, hard cut right. So we're all striving to do the best of what we can to be the most, um, the most inclusive and uh, not bigot, not dickish to as many people as we can. And we want to be no we we want to be inclusive and also respectful. So if somebody Oof. tells you um is for example it, you can come to a point where it's okay so now I've read up on this culture I feel like I understand it inside and out. The kind of, let me am I able to participate in it as um to the extent that I want to which is you know in all of it. Mm-hmm. Right? And it goes back to that point of don't ever try to um set yourself as a protagonist in this culture space right if someone tells you hey no you're not allowed to um or you should not partake in in this particular aspect you should not wear this headdress you do you should not do this be respectful of that as well and Listen. don't and back to that entitlement don't 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 come with the argument of of oh but you know that's discrimination i mean again we're not going to talk about that because if you say that you're dumb if you don't understand you're just dumb <laughs> just because someone else has something that you like and they don't want to share it with you they don't have to share it with you okay just be respectful boundaries yeah. are important and they're necessary they're valid yeah yeah that's a another great point and i think we can't add any more because <laughs> we're over by 10 minutes but yes okay. for sure again as i said the 15 minutes don't count earlier <laughs> yeah 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 you are not entitled to someone else's culture you get to partake in it as much as you are let because it's theirs that's just how it works you could want to do more and you i mean just appreciate think about it it's actually from the opposite point of view as well like it's good to be yourself guys when you acknowledge who you are it's it everything is better you 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 know uh, trying to be someone else trying to adopt something else and i it i've seen it it isn't pretty okay <laughs> like 
the more you adopt who you are, is the more you'll even be able to appreciate things outside of your sphere as well. So with that note, we're going to end today's podcast. Thank you for, so much for listening. Um, I know it was a wild ride. If you have a bunch of opinions, I hope good opinions, then <laughs> leave them in the comment section below on our website. We have a whole podcast page where you can leave comments or feel free to tag us in a story or something on Instagram at gladlyglobal underscore. I think that's it. We are here once a month. Um, we set the dates and post it on our Instagram. So we will see you in the next culturally informed, culturally conscious, language-related, Gladly Global podcast episode. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>